well, I'm uh, 11 kilometers away from from the campground, which is kind of like a landmark, which is not where I'm going. But after that, there's no like I need to follow this road over here, and then the spot like the fire fire arm restricted zone ends over here. So that's already, this is already public land, and so I just turned from. Uh, Highway 22, so I took 22 to get down here. This is 22, and now I just turned east on the 66. And so from here, it's 11 clicks, 10 minutes to, to that campground. And I printed out my map over here, but it's very tiny. But basically right now, I'm somewhere over here. This is Highway 22, and then, yeah, Probably in five clicks, I'm entering the public area, public uh, land, but there's no firearms over here in this yellow area, like I explained in the yesterday's video. But then the campground is over here, this green area, and then I have to get into here somehow, and I can only use either purple or dark red roads that are marked, you know, purple or dark red. Everything else is for. 4x4 four four, and I printed out some, found some free, <laughs> look at this, found, found some free paper targets online, print them, printed them out, but, boy, and I also printed out a uh, copy of the email, but I, I have nowhere to, well, actually I do have, I brought some tape, I brought the tape, and I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna sacrifice the, the ammo box, like this bulk ammo with um, with slugs that I just purchased online, right? 175 slugs for 210 bucks Canadian. It came in its own ammo metal uh, box, and I already have a bigger and uh, you know better uh, ammo case I purchased from Cabela, and I just realized that if I cannot find a uh, a hill or some kind of a rock or you know tree stump where to put my uh, targets then I'll, I'll have to use that metal case like especially with slugs if I don't miss and I just hit let's say the I bought a bunch of cans of pop and jugs of pop stuff like that so I'm gonna put them on top of a case and just try to hit it with a slug so that I don't damage the case in case I might use it in the future and I'm inside my rental car Got lucky, uh, this is a pretty fancy Chrysler Pacifica minivan. You know, the doors, I like that the side doors slide because my spot over there, the guy parked with his pickup truck again, like this far away. But getting my stuff in, you know, like the shotgun and the ammo was easy because the back opens up and it's all remote. You double, double tap that button and it's all motorized. It opens up by itself. And I also wanted to show you this area because I'm going west straight towards mountains. And so I should be able to see some beautiful um, scenery, you know? And the weather today is great. It was plus five C or 41 F. Now it's already plus eight and I'm just, driving inside in my in a t-shirt and a sweater but I did bring my gloves because it still can be chill outside plus it'll help holding the gun and I preloaded uh, four mags 10 round mags I, I don't like that 15 round mag for this 590m it just it's ridiculously huge and uh, very heavy so I only use 10 round mags I would love to have five round mags but they are sold out everywhere and so I have four mags and I brought a box of extra cartridges just in case 40 rounds is not enough. So 20, 20 rounds are double O buckshot and 20 rounds are one ounce slugs. And this will be my first time ever that I'm shooting slugs and my only second time I'm shooting this shotgun. And yesterday after I was uh, playing with the length of pull on my new rifle I decided that I needed to add one more piece of plastic on the shotgun as well so I, I increased the 
length of pull by probably I don't know quarter of an inch or you see like this this is nice area and I'm pretty sure I'm already inside the crown land but I'm guessing there should be some kind of a sign and so yeah this Pacifica amazing machine it's so comfortable so they said brand new but I look at the mileage it's 15,000 clicks so roughly 9,000 miles okay Texas gate 90 meters improvement district yeah sometimes these can be rough okay you're entering avalanche avalanche country so now we basically coming into the mountains though this is Kenaneski's country I thought it would say purchase pass here what pass so is the weekend nobody told me anything about any passes when I was talking to the lady online nobody said anything about passes McLean Creek Road Well, if they, if they tell me to buy a pass, I'll buy a pass. All right, so I'm somewhere, I'm turning left somewhere here. Yeah, I see it already signs, Alberta Parks. Okay. There's a SUV following me, gray. I thought at first it was maybe a cop, but because it has something on the top, like very tall. And then I see the guy has, uh, some kind of a case or suitcase at the top all right this is my first time here again I did after lots of research right so I found these two areas this one and maybe later I'll try the another one and yeah it's all like wild wilderness pretty much here I just need to find I hope I'll be able to find some like I'm, I'm hoping for a hill you know like maybe open space 10-15 meters in front of a hill so the hill will act as a backstop and of course I have to make sure there's no there's no um, trails going through that land and of course I need the open spot where there's no trees which might not be easy okay and the guys are doing something here well, he's cutting trees and moving some wood do they allow you to cut trees over here I don't think so it's a park okay and so and this is uh, I believe it's a v6 this Pacifica but I really like that tailgate that it's automatic the rear door but it's you know, it has uh, three rows of seats so the actual baggage or luggage area is not that big because there's a, a row of seats right there but I managed to put my um, my ammo case in there but lots of space for the shotgun case 600 meters turn left onto McLean Creek Trail okay so this is it boys and girls so highway 66 continues continues west and over here there's a sign McLean Creek Provincial Recreation Area so I should be this one Take the next left onto McLean Creek Trail. Continue on McLean Creek Trail for two kilometers. All right. So this is still, uh, as you can see, a paved road. Public land use zone. This is this is where I'm entering. McLean Creek Public Land Use Zone. Yeah, sorry about this, but I cannot see anything. Uh, wildfires. Uh, oh, and it's all covered in ice here. And I tried to get a 4x4 or or something, but they didn't have it. So at least this is front wheel drive. And I feel pretty confident with uh, front-wheel drive. But 
but I still have to be careful because there's already snow even though it's okay plus seven now all right so it says turn right in 1.2 kilometers but that's that's the road towards the actual campground so I don't want to go there I have to keep going and I think after that spot I'm guessing the road will will become unpaved just you know dirt road but this entire area this one is marked with those angled lines um, on the map so there's no okay maple yeah camper center camper center trail of Fisher Creek I think I have to go. I have to go right, sorry. <sighs> Maximum forty five kilometers per hour. Highway vehicles permitted on designated trails only. Okay, I should probably stop somewhere here. McLean Pond, McLean Campground, OHV staging area. Yeah, I should stop here because there's a turn in here. All right, so let's see, where are we? Okay, so this is, oh, I'm over here. McLean Pond de use area. Okay. So then we're gonna pass, yeah, I'm gonna pass, yeah, so that goes into the campground. And then I'm gonna pass this circle, McLean Creek staging area. And then the next, like you can hardly see this, but the next, like this thing over here, that's where I can go. To the left. Yeah, I can go to the left. So this green area is the, uh, is the campground. And so this is already public land, right? You can do whatever you want, except you still cannot shoot firearms over here. Because I'm guessing it's maybe too populated. So... And so probably there's not going to be any signal for the cell phone, but GPS should work. All right, so we're coming towards McLean Creek staging area. And I was able to see pictures on uh, on Street View Google Maps. I saw a bunch of trucks, like pickup trucks and cars parked over there. So, so far so good. I see some open areas over there. And you see the problem is, so basically this is my first time. Actually, I even wanted to, to, um, okay, so this is, I think this is the place, that staging area. See how many trucks are there, man. So I have to find an area, like really. So this is left. Okay. So what is this? 
this. Oh, we have to go this way. Okay, so this is the staging area. Uh huh. You see, they all take these. Uh, they have these trailers. So I'm guessing they're running all these what they call all-terrain vehicles, 4x4 ATV. Because there's a bunch of trails in here. the road you see that one is designated as uh, ATV road and here they have bathrooms why am I going here oh it's okay it's like a big circle I thought I took a wrong turn somewhere. Okay, so now we should be turning this to the right. And so yeah, I should find something away from roads. Wait a second. Now I'm driving back. thing I noticed that I was driving okay so now I'm driving proper southwest yeah I don't want this road on the left so the same way okay Uh -huh. So basically, I have to turn a right somewhere there in order to continue west. So now this is, I'm in the middle of the circle. <laughs> and these guys should probably, they will say, what the heck, what is this guy? This guy is doing circles over here. That's where I'm supposed to go. McLean Creek South Access Radio Controlled Load 4 Empty going in, loaded going out. All vehicles must call kilometers. What the heck? That's why they all stopped here, because, see, I went that way, and that's basically a return. I knew that it wouldn't be this easy, you know? So now, yeah, I wanna go, then I cannot take that green road because that that's only for like you see that's only for ATVs okay hold on I have a PDF copy of the map actually so I can increase the uh, scale oh, talk to a guy with an ATV he was really nice of course he knows all this area so basically the only way 
Because if I keep going this way, I'm, I'm turning back and going back to Calgary. So the only way is to turn right over here, like this road here. You know, and then he's, he says, you still have to go around the gate. There's like a gate closed, but he says there'll be, uh, you'll see tracks. And, and I said, do you ever see people here shooting, like target practicing? And he says, oh yeah, you hear them all the time. So I said, okay. So I thought he would say, tell me that I'm crazy. You know, like what, <laughs> what target practice? But he said, no, everything was cool. And so, yeah, so I'm, uh, I'm over here. And you see, this is the bad spot, so this staging area, right? So, uh, yeah, I was trying to get here, so we're right here. So there's no way to go, It's and you see this red. Oh yeah, over here it says, gate closed December 1st, May 14th. But basically, that's where I need to go and follow this purple line, and then after a while, it stops being firearm restricted area. And he says, the best place to shoot a shotgun is here, he says, where... There'll be a, another road, like this exit 252. Um, but I know that on Google Maps, maybe let's try Waze. Maybe Waze is better. Um, does it show my location here? Oh, there's no signal. There's no signal. No network connection. Try again later. Okay. You see? So Waze, everybody says, oh yeah, Waze is better. At least on Google Maps, it shows my location here. So there's a turn. Oh, it actually it ends. Huh, look at this. The road ends. So let's check again the, the map. See, it's a good idea that I... Uh, I uh, downloaded this map. I basically I, e I emailed it to myself because I can make it bigger. So they're saying that see over here it shows fine, but I think it's probably ends over here. I don't know. But anyway, so let's get let's get somehow to this. area and hopefully we can do some business so actually where i was turning back so that was the proper way to go but you know how do you know right unless so when i'm here next time i will already see and of course that's too narrow by the way that's why it's closed because it's not see that's why they said must call every kilometer or something so that's not not the proper way Oh, and the guy says, oh, yeah, if you if you are in the open area like this with some trees in the back and you make sure he says there's no no um, trails, he says, you should be fine. He says, unless you're shooting slugs. <laughs> and I didn't tell him I, I had slugs, so now I have to be careful. OK, I think it's this one. He said, first right. Yeah, it's this one. Uh-huh, and he said that you'll see there'll be a... The gate is closed. I think it was he was talking about this one. And... Wow. But that's what the hand that's not for that's not for cars. Designated tray system. Actually he was saying, yeah, he says don't go into the first one. The first one will be very very deep. So there should be Another area somewhere here. Let's see. You see all the all these guys are parked here. Yeah, 
it shows that I'm already going east. I'm east of the road. Because yeah, that one, you see, like all these guys, it's all ATVs, right? And I saw that road was really, I don't know, like on the map it shows purple, but... So now I'm going back here. Yeah, I see like this area, right? That's for ATVs and stuff. Oh, so I'm back at the at the same place. That's where I turned in. Uh huh. Son of a gun. So I don't think. I don't think you're allowed to go there in a car. Yeah, it's not gonna work. I just walked over there and took a look and it's really not for my vehicle. And plus there's a big sign there. It says this area is patrolled by, by wildlife, whatever officers and they check these uh, ATVs because they have to be tagged and properly licensed and you know like no drinking you know no garbage no leaving garbage so I know it's this uh, the area is being policed but what's funny is that this um, this spot over here um, this part right oh and there's a sign that says no firearm discharge uh one kilometer from this and so this part so i'm right here right so all i need to do is just get over here and that's already allowed that's the area for firearm you know discharge and that also there's a bigger map over there with the easier where you can easier see the distance and this looks like this is about a kilometer only and the road is clear, so I thought I could just grab my gun. And there's a rule in here that says must only you cannot walk around with an open shotgun, must be in a case. Okay, I can grab my case and I can I have a backpack, put my ammo in there, but then how do I carry all the you know cans and, and, and stuff like that? And then of course on the way, let's say I walk here and I find a spot, so but it's probably close to two kilometers to here where the, the other guy was saying this is a good area where all these uh, purple lines intersect but the end of fire firearm restriction zone I'm pretty sure it's only 10 minutes that way 10 minute walk but you know I can walk it's fine but first off I'm a bit scared you know to it's you know $700 shotgun with a was like 250 for a, a red dot you know, like, how do I know it's a safe area to walk around like that, you know? Because all these guys drive around in all these uh, ATVs, you know? Some bad guy can just grab my shotgun plus my ammo and disappear, right? And that guy was saying, oh yeah, go around. Oh really, are you kidding? So these guys, they go around. They go around because they have an ATV, but over there, the road is like this and very, see like this snow, it's very deep. And there's a reason why all these guys are parked here. You know, I don't see, I didn't see a single car or pickup truck um, going that way, but looks like they will open this area in what is it like May 1st or something like that so basically since I don't have any ATVs oh shoot you know I, at least I found the area right but of course I knew that first time it would not work that I can just show up and start shooting but at least I confirmed like the other guy said oh yeah he says you can hear them shooting all the time so at least this is legit this is a legitimate um, what do you call it? Um, time wasting, you know? <laughs> and so 
so yeah this goes back so I came from here so now I'm just going back so yeah it would really help you know if I had this this thing like ATV you know just load everything on that little mini pickup and you go but honestly that was my biggest concern my biggest concern was that I still misunderstood something and that I cannot do target practice you know that was my biggest concern and I thought when I was talking to the other guy who was giving me directions uh, I thought he would start laughing like you know like shotgun practice but I, I asked him I said I just want to do some target shooting and he said oh yeah they, you can hear them shooting all the time here see like this area over here oh that's the um, another staging area yeah, and now we just the road gonna go left yeah we're going left so that the camp campground is somewhere here on my left yeah McLean Creek camper center center no but I'm definitely coming back here I'm coming back in uh, when it's summer so maybe by that time I'm gonna get uh, like maybe a special case because in the summer I think I'll be okay walking there because I'm still not sure that you can actually go past that gate in a regular car but since I have the car now until Monday uh, what's the time now time now is 1.30 I'm gonna go to that um, gun club in downtown Calgary maybe I should go today like go today and then again tomorrow because I really want to try slugs and actually yeah that's you know 25 yards it's more than enough It's just that today is today's what today's Saturday and it's already one o'clock so they're probably gonna be they're gonna be busy because on, on weekends they're busy so this is highway 66 I should get to 22 so 130 so probably by the time I'm, I'm at that gun club if I go now it will be 230 um, which should be still okay The river on my left here beautiful I think I might just need to wait over there right but this time I have my own my own paper targets can just oh and I didn't do the contract because last time they gave me one hour free 
right so this time I can I can do the contract because I still need to shoot somewhere until spring because over here I see all gates are closed just like I thought they would be but in the summer we should be okay funny thing happened today is um, 6.30 I, I'm, I was already getting emails because my carrier could not load yesterday that big forklift and it was running 10 days late right because of bad weather and because of uh, delays but also I think I made a mistake of telling him that the second load, which is a mast, was LTL. So this guy was looking for a load to put on the truck. And so finally the, the customer, the shipper, agreed to pay you know, extra money to his workers to show up on Saturday, which is today. And they said, I said, what time do you want? Do you want the trucks to be there? And they said eight o'clock. And so 6.30, my time, that's already, no wait, six, five, 5.55 I think. Yeah, that's when I got the first email, 5.55, which is five to eight in Ontario. And the shipper says, Sergey, uh, your trucks are not here yet. And so then I sent him an email and like 10 after eight, in Ontario, the step that guy showed up. And then they said the RGN guy who was loading the main machine called and said he was two hours away. <laughs> There's always something, right? So, and and then the, the nightmare started for me at six o'clock, right? Because now that guy, the step that guy showed up with pretty bad attitude and pretty much full load on his trailer. And we told them that the mast was 23,500 pounds. But then a couple of days ago, the shipper told me that they, they separated the forks, right? Because the mast for a forklift also has forks. And that was the, that was the overall weight, 23,500. And so they separated the forks for easier loading because he says usually they put the forks on the trailer and then they load the mast on top of it so uh, but the carrier starts panicking oh that's too heavy so what are you talking about we told you the weight was 23.5 it's the same weight it's just now it's easier to load no i'll be overloaded so we start screaming at each other the shipper screams at the carrier carrier screams at me you know, I could not believe it. Like Saturday, right? Usually Saturday is supposed to be like a peaceful day when people relax. And like it's not even yet seven o'clock my time when we're already hating each other's guts, you know? And basically it came to the point where the carrier said, uh, the, the shipper says, oh, and the, the, the carrier says, okay, uh, I'm gonna send another truck Monday to pick up the forks separately and I'm like wait I told you guys what the weight was right so what's the issue well he has he has too much already on his trailer so why that's not my fault right but the carrier says okay well we'll send another truck Monday to pick up this and the shipper says no 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 we already had bad experience with a deal like this where oh and the yeah and the carrier says we're not gonna charge you extra because I said hey I'm not paying you anything extra and he says, yeah, we're not gonna charge you, no charge, but a different truck will show up Monday. And he says, then, and, and it'll be delivered together with, you know, the main load. But now the shipper says, no way. I, I'm gonna lock the gate 
with your truck and the forks, but the forks must leave together. He says, we had a couple of experiences like this where they picked up the, the machine, they picked up the mast and they left the forks and the guy promised us no extra charge. And then he says, two weeks later, when everything is delivered, we see a bill for like 4,600 bucks. And I said, well, the carrier swears that he will not charge me anything extra. So that means I'm not going to charge you anything extra. And the carrier came up with an idea. He says, we're going to take this to Edmonton, Alberta. And then we're going to reload the, the forks on the same truck that now has the mast. And so he says, the mast and the forks and the main machine will arrive on the same day. in BC where it's going and they're shouting at me I'm shouting at them and basically the carrier says we are, we are tired of all this BS he says your shipper is basically a bad guy and uh, you know my company is a bad company and uh, <laughs> he says okay either we do it my way like his way we pick up the Fox Monday or we're gonna cancel this load and the shipper is also telling me, okay, either they take the forks or we cancel this load and we'll have to find somebody else. Like, can you believe this? We have a bunch of money on the line here. Everything is set up. All the paperwork was done. Like we exchanged 2 million emails about this stupid load. And, and honestly, I was asking them about this. I said, why on earth? Like I was asking the shipper, why on earth did you separate the mast? Like, I don't understand. I, I moved these forklifts myself as a carrier. I know it's not too, too tall, right? Like I move them with a the mast. It just, you, um, you tilt the mast down and maybe put something under the rear, rear uh, wheels over the forklift but it's legal, it's gonna be like 12 feet tall. I don't know why they do it like this, but I'm guessing he says, well, it's easier to load or something, I don't know. But I remember I moved these, the mast was always on. No, maybe once, once I moved it with no mast, but other times the, the machine was fully assembled. And so now we had to get two trucks, right? The RGN for, for the main machine and then and then the step deck of lead bed for the for the for the mast and you see and here i made a mistake i told them it was ltl less than truckload and so of course these guys they don't care they want to make money and so they they uh load it up to the gills their trailer and they couldn't pick up the entire thing like unbelievable so anyway so now they should be on their way but now my boss is waiting for me I, I said hey I'm going to this forest area to do some target practice but I'll be back around probably three or four o'clock and we have to do extra paperwork now uh, on the computer even though the carrier said oh I don't need any any extra paperwork but my boss says well what happens if like we we don't have that truck in our system the third truck right what happens if those forks just disappear or get damaged you know or they can even get damaged you know when they transload them right so when like the guy said Edmonton they're gonna put it back on the trailer so each time you handle a load there's a chance it'll be uh, you know something happens right it can get damaged scratched so he says we have to protect our butts and we have to show that 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 piece two forks are moving on a separate truck and he, and he says we have to add a stop in there on the mast load like show extra stop let's say in Edmonton that the driver must pick up the forks the driver of this truck with the mast so basically it's a lot of complications and so so I don't know I'm not I'm not sure I want to go through this again and also like remember I did a video before about being nice like 
one person in this all this who was not nice was the driver of the step deck trailer who was calling the shipper three four times a day as he was driving and tried to ask him to to move his load and that's where the shipper says wait we thought we were getting a full truck load uh, like exclusive use on the step deck and i checked my paperwork and i said oh i'm sorry i told them they can pick up something else um, because uh, that's why we the rate was pretty low it was not it was not a full truck load rate so anyway so i it's still i expect i still expect lots of problems with this with this load but we'll see I probably should stop and uh, I need to program my GPS otherwise I have to I have to okay do we have okay I think we already have a signal mm. Or only 40 kilometers. Head northeast on Highway 22. Okay. So I should be there. Okay, time now is 10 to 10 to 2. So I should be there at 2:20. Uh, shoot for an hour and then head back home. And then we can take care of this uh, paperwork. And I mentioned this before, the way we do it, right? So I we use that, uh, what is called, team viewer. Team viewer. So I'm on the phone with uh, my boss or my colleague. And he can see my screen and he's telling me what to do. Like, well, if I, if I, I know probably like 50, 60 percent of how to do something and but he's watching me do it and if I do something wrong he corrects me but he cannot he cannot change change anything on the on the screen but he can see my mouse you know and we're talking at the same time so it's really cool and it's I find it's the best way to learn right because when I'm doing something myself because you know just watching somebody do something uh, because I watched a bunch of videos about you know how to use this TMS transportation management software but but watching videos it's not the same so it's much more useful where somebody's watching you do something right like you know create a load create an account for a shipper create an account for the consignee you know um, add information like weight and dimensions about the load and then yesterday we had to resend the load confirmation because because the date the date changed right like it was supposed to be January 11th and now the guy was loading today which is 21st so my boss says we have to change the date so he says just correct the loading date and the ETA to the consignee and then he showed me how to do it and so I sent him everything and one of the things I added there on the first page kind of like a cover page I said since we are running late with this uh, daily updates are required via text or email to me and at the bottom I wrote please acknowledge receipt and guess what Two hours later, there was still no acknowledgement, so I, I, I called them and uh, said, did you receive my email? Oh yeah, I saw it somewhere. So he didn't even open it. So honestly, I don't know. 
I don't know if I'll be doing stuff like this again in the future like with multiple trucks but again this this is only my second load right and it was pretty complicated because there's two trucks involved you know there's 20 people calling me for updates it's uh, very stressful okay so now like I came through this roundabout but I came from there actually that's a construction zone it's like 50 kilometer speed limit so now instead of going that way towards Trans Canada I'm gonna go I'm gonna go right which is highway 8 and highway 8 should take me towards downtown Calgary because that gun club is right there but that one is already I feel I feel pretty relaxed because I know where I'm going I know that there's parking there it's kind of like even though it's pretty much downtown Calgary but it's industrial area there's like industrial buildings warehouses everywhere and this that thing is like inside the uh, what do you call it a strip plaza and there's lots of parking but again I, I'm just afraid that they will be too busy especially later in the day because last time right I showed up there at nine o'clock like they open at nine but this guy it's really it's so comfortable you know like it's picks up speed pretty fast and um, very nice you know soft suspension super comfortable steering wheel of course cruise control it has automatic climate control uh, they didn't give me any any uh, satellite radio and I was asking them for a uh, navigation because I knew that I would lose the signal in there in that area but she didn't have any cars available with the navigation but pretty decent you know pretty decent vehicle and I know that these ones are not cheap it's probably 60 70 thousand bucks 